Okay, when we're talking about drawing a portrait, the first thing we need to get out of our minds is what we think our face looks like or what we think our head looks like. Um, if you actually take a look at your head, it's quite egg-shaped and it goes back in two ways. Um, the top of your head around your forehead is wider than it is by your chin in most cases and also the back of your head the part that sort of holds your brain is quite large also compared to the front um, and then down by your chin again so um, we really do have egg-shaped heads and once you sort of get the idea that oh I guess my head isn't really circle or oval once you get that out of your mind it's easy to start um, drawing what your head at, or your portrait really would look like then. So once you get that taken care of, you want to get a mirror and when you work with portraiture, you want to be actually looking at yourself in the mirror because again, you don't want to draw what you think you look like. Um, and you don't want to draw off memory, at least in the beginning when you're first learning how to draw a portrait of somebody. So I'm going to be looking in my mirror at my head and I'm also going to be, um, I have this little practice sheet here that uh, my students are going to be using so um, I'm going to use that as well. So I'm going to start with the widest part of my head. That is the top of my head. I'm going to create this very wide arch. Okay. And this is just the beginning of my sketch, so this can change as I go. And the easiest way to explain this to, especially elementary, is you have your large sad face or your rainbow. And then down here, you have your small happy face. And of course, that will end up being our chin later. And all we need to do is gently connect those. I'll work around the tripod here. And that's just a very generic, basic egg shape. Um, I would go back into the mirror and adjust the wideness of my particular egg to fit my head. Um, but with that, sort of general egg shape in there, it's easier to go off than just coming off with it off the top of your head or off your memory, okay? Now they have my basic head shape drawn. I need to start dividing up those proportions. And of course, everybody's face is different and almost nobody's face is perfectly symmetrical, but there are some general guidelines that we can follow, especially when we're first learning how. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna divide our face vertically down the center. And this is a super duper light line because I'm gonna be erasing this later. I just want this here to kind of help me figure out what goes where. Once I have that line done, I'm going to also divide my face in half horizontally. Okay, and this is going to help me out um, in finding my eyes and my eyebrows. Um, I'm going to do that one more time in this section. So I divided from here to here in half, and this is actually the bottom of, bottom of my nose. And I'm going to go ahead and do it one last time from here to here, divide that in half. And that's actually going to be where um, my two lips meet for my mouth. I'm going to look at my giant alien head. Uh, we don't really walk around with foreheads this big, but when you walk around, do you really only see someone's forehead? Or do you actually see quite a bit of the top of their head? Of course, depending on how high they are in comparison to your eyesight and where you're looking. But generally, when you're looking face-to-face -face at somebody, you can see quite a bit at the top of their head. And this what, that's what this represents here. So let's get our eyebrows in so we can see where exactly our hair is and fix our alien foreheads. So I'm going to be looking in my mirror and I'm just going to generally sketch out the shape of my eyebrows. And I'm using that first line I made as a guide to where they're going to be about.
So I'll be going in later and filling these out a bit more, but I want to know generally how they go. Okay. The next thing I can do is add in my nose. Now, drawing your nose can be kind of tricky. Um, again, we have to sort of stay away from those ideas of how we think our nose looks. Um, nobody should have little piggy noses anymore. We're not drawing a clear nostril shot. I'm not looking up at your nose, or you're not looking at your nose when you're drawing um, with your head tilted back like a little pig. Um, you should be looking fairly straight on, so what you really see is this outline shadow of um, where your nose sort of ends, okay? And your nostrils would be here. And later, there, there may be some um, greater shadowing happening there. Some of you have a, a pretty predominant side nostril, and you can sketch that in if you see that. But really, this is going to be shadow work later. Now that I have my nose, I can work on my mouth. And everyone's mouth is quite different. You wanna look at that line um, where your two lips meet, and mine kinda does this little downturn. I'm not sad, just the way my, my cheeks fall. Um, and I can also draw the bottom line of my lower lip. Okay. And this would be shadow work later. And I have a very small top lip. I just have the tiniest little bit of information up here. And then the rest is all going to be shadow work. So that's my mouth. The next thing I can work on is my eyes. Now your eyes are tricky. They're going to take some time to get right. I'm just going to show you a basic formula so that while we work through this and you develop your skills, you can grow from that. Um, but your eyes go underneath your eyebrows and they are larger than you think. I'm going to start by drawing a lemon shape on both sides. Just do the best you can to keep them as close in size as you can. But really, if you look in the mirror, one eye is slightly larger than the other in real life. Then because we don't want to look super duper surprised, we want to put in some eyelid information. So that's just a little banana on top of our lemon. And then for our pupils and our iris, we want to draw a part of a circle. Now some of it should be cut off by a banana. So I have my lemon with my banana and part of my apple. Okay? And again, this will be information we put in later with shading um, so we don't look like scary little white-eyed ghosts here. Okay? I'll just put in some general information so we can move on from there. Okay? There's also a tiny little lip um, underneath your eye, your eyelid part here, if you want to put that information in also. Okay, now we have our general face, facial features in here, and we can give ourselves um, some ears next. What I'd like you to do is find your ears with your fingers, and then walk your fingers towards your face. And what you're going to find is the top of your ear should pretty much line up with your eyebrow. In most cases, again, everyone's body is a little bit different and might not work all the time. These are just general guidelines. Okay, my ear is kind of squished on this side a little bit. And find the where your the bottom of your ear lines up with your face. So feel the bottom of your ear and walk it towards your face. And mine happens to line up with just about my lip part here. So I'm going to put that in there. These will just be general guidelines for uh, myself later when I'm able to look inside my ear and really find that information that's in there. I can put on my hair now so I don't look like an alien anymore. And my hair today happens to be falling very close to my eyebrows. And it kind of sweeps up like this. And then on this side, it doesn't touch my eyebrows, but it comes right before my ear. 
I'm just sketching in where my hair is falling in comparison to the facial features I already drew. Okay, and my hair is kind of messy today. It's not flat against my skull, so I need to come up a little bit when I draw that. But this will all be my hair that I'm going to, again, put in later with color and shading. And my hair will fall down like this today, okay? Now, I don't want a floaty head. I want to put my neck in there. So here's where we're going to do our neck. <clears throat> Again, feel on your body where your neck lines up. Does it come down like this? I don't think so. What facial feature or feature on your head does your neck line up with? Mine comes down just around my ears. I'm going to sketch that information in there. Okay. Now I don't have a floaty head anymore. Now with this basic information that I have sketched out here, I can t I look very sad. <laughs> I can take my colors and my pencils and go back in and start adding shapes and sort of tweaking where um, things have adjusted because I'm moving back and forth to look at my paper and then to look in my mirror um, to kind of migrate around this camera. Um, so some things are out of proportion so I want to go back and adjust those and I'm ready to go for my color.